G'day, welcome to the TFI Uncut Podcast. I'm your host, Tim Wyrow, also known as Tazcast across socials. I understand all of the effort that goes into these films each year, and I'm proud as punch to be hosting this podcast to learn all about the juicy gossip that went into everyone's films this year. Today is a fantastic episode, so buckle up and let's get into it. G'day everyone and welcome back to another TFI Uncut Podcast. Today our guest needs, well, I mean, you may have heard of him, Jackson Coffee. He's everywhere, all over the internet. How are you, mate? <laughs> Thanks very much for jumping on board. Nah, stoked to be on board again and uh, having a chat with you. We had a nice meet and greet the other night at the uh, premiere and yeah, keen to get more in depth about what yeah, what, the, for- what it's all about. Yeah, well, uh, it got a little bit messy after the event, but um, we certainly got our, our fair share of yarns in. It was pretty funny. How was it um, catching up with everyone this yes. year, and, and how was your experience at the Gold Class screening? Yeah, the Gold Class screening's unreal. I mean, having free piss with a bunch of people who are sort of travelling around and doing similar things to you is only going to lead to good conversations and an even funnier night. And the films, when you just see your film on, the, on a movie screen, it's just like something that's pretty cool to see and not many times you're going to see in your lifetime so it's almost the best part of being in this whole show is making a film and getting to see it on on a cinema yeah so yeah, yeah that was a that was a hell night and i hadn't met everyone i'd met two of the people who was in it from the previous year but everyone else i hadn't met before so you also meet a lot of people around the country who you kind of make connections with and then hopefully later on can go fishing with so yeah yeah great night. i mean it's such a big opportunity with the tfi bringing so many different people like you said um from around the globe to together to to network did you even from last year's event um did you sort of make any connections to go fishing yeah. with anyone afterwards i haven't actually fully gone fishing with anyone yet just because i've been working and traveling and kind of doing my own thing so much and i've been over the west coast so there was only oh actually i did link, link up with ben who was in it last year? He was the Northern Addicts, and we um we didn't go fishing. I were at the pub and had a good time <laughs> over west, and we had plans to meet up and go yeah. fishing again. But um, when I come more back over the top and uh, across the east coast again, I'm definitely keen to go fishing with all yeah. the crew. So just a little bit of back backstory about what you're doing at the moment. You're you're currently uh, on the Gold Coast. We've got a place to stay down there, which is why you were down there for after. Um, nice to come home, you know to a nice cozy house but for the majority of the time you're kind of living out of your car hey yeah so we are pretty much full-time in our car and um we just work when when we have to and then we go traveling for the majority of the time i've been trying to do the youtube for i think the better part of a year now and it's slowly you know creeping up and i'm learning a lot at the same time about how to edit and um but yeah we've been living in our car for five years now but prior to that i was I've grown up in caravans and buses. I've travelled around the country my whole life, but the last five years has been in my own car with my own boat and with Steph. So it's been an amazing, amazing journey. We we set to go out around Australia for one year, and then buddy, we got stuck in over west, and it's just that's just life. It's just how it happens. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Which which way originally did you lap around? Was it from the east coast up <laughs> up top up Kimberleys and then back down, and then you found no. Right. We went round the bottom first. Um, I kind of strategically done it uh, seasonally, so you'd kind of get the nice time of years to come around. Even though when we got to South Oz, it was blowing its head off and horrible. But um, then we got sort of not, we kind of did a bit of Perth and skipped our way. And once we got to Exmouth and and that sort of northern coastline, which is originally is where I wanted to hang out anyway because of the fishing, um, we kind of just got stuck there and have been bouncing between. We fly home for summer and then spend sort of winter autumn there and then try and work over the whole of spring and that's sort of yeah, been the routine cool. you've sorted it out <laughs> quite well um so how did it feel for you being invited to yeah. the tfi this year when you got the phone call what was what was that reaction i mean well i'll go back to last year because because you got second last year you're already rolling over into it this year so coming second last year was awesome but when i got the call up originally the year before i was ecstatic because i'd seen it before and i just thought what a cool idea and a lot of fishermen and, and people you look up to put in such an amazing videos. Uh, I think it was Play Your Suit done the one on the on the stand up paddleboard and, and those sort of videos. And I was like, oh, I'd really love to do that one day. And um, and it wouldn't have been a couple of weeks later they got the call up. I went, How is this? <laughs> and um, then just rolled over into this year. And it's been a bit more of knowing what's going on. And last year I only had a week to prepare for the con, whereas this year I had you know a whole year 
even though in the end I end up not even being prepared, which just yeah, always so happens. Yeah, so let's go down to uh, the nitty and gritty of it. The opening sequence in, in your film, we won't give too much away, but you had a bit of an incident with your boat. So you had to yeah. give the old man a call yeah. and, and beg him to come up. So <laughs> how did that all unfold? <laughs> Dad, Dad was always wanting to jump on board anyway. But I originally wanted to, because last year I did the film in my tinny, I kind of wanted to keep that sort of showing people that you can just do it in a tinny and you don't need the big boats. But the problem with my tinny is like, it's so old and it has so many holes in it. Like if it was a solid tinny that was like, what well, you know, that size, but a newer model, it would have been fine. But I've been battling holes in that boat. Like if you follow my Instagram or, or YouTube right the eye back, you'll see I've been battling to keep that boat alive for about five years now. And on that particular trip, I, well, I had pinholes, but I split it. And the split was like, is that long? Oh my gosh. When I got out to the islands and yeah. And, and I just went to Steph, I went, this isn't working. <laughs> I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to call dad. <laughs> As we were just discussing uh, prior to starting to record, like you're, you're a pretty well connected man, especially after competing last year. Why was it that you decided to take that family route and just get the family together? Was it just because it was a great excuse to spend some quality time together, or you know, is is there a particular yeah. reason why you in- included them? I did have originally a friend who was gonna. We were gonna do the Kimberleys originally. Wow! And I was gonna try and do it around the Kimberleys, which is a trip that we've just done afterwards uh, with it afterwards but um the reason why i ended up just doing it with the family was when you have a filmer you kind of have to lock in you know a two-week window because you're going to be paying them and they got to take it out of their schedule whereas this year you had three months and we're all, we were already out you know doing this fishing stuff on the boat and i just thought let's just do a month out on the island and just do what we're doing anyway and we'll make a video out of it and it seemed to work in the end like i had the camera gear and we have camera skills but I think it really come down to in the end with our video was just nailing big fish and, and going to special places that kind of speak for himself. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about one of those tidal pools as well that you went up to when you were in the Kimberleys, that trip that you did afterwards. Yeah. Can you explain to me? I saw yeah. a photo online. It looks <laughs> unreal. What is it, like 10 meter tides up there? So ten, like there's like 12 meter tides up there. And um, we went into this spot. You go up this creek and you get right up into this creek and then you, you anchor in a big like it's probably like 20 meter deep pool but when you're driving into the creek it's about 12 meters so you got to come in on the high tide and then you can't anchor there you sort of string yourself off the rocks and there was already two yachts anchored in there and we didn't quite realize we knew the tides were crazy up there but when we done this day we're in this thing we like in a big chasm like this and you're thinking like it's not going to drop out 11 meters and then all of a sudden drops out and you're stuck in there like you're literally stuck in there you can't get out like it's just incredible and there's crocodiles and and it, yeah, the Kimberleys is just uh, an amazing place, and I can't wait to. I'm going back there in a couple of weeks. I'm going back there. <laughs> yeah, cool. Were there any fish in that little pond from that photo you put up in that chasm? Or there's little jacks. We were there. The only thing that when you, we go to the Kimberleys, we went there in winter. So winter is like a good time of year to be there, like weather, wind wise, but fishing wise, it's a little more quiet. So in that particular pool, we only caught We actually didn't catch any fish in that pool, but there are little jacks and that in there, and I've heard of people catching bass. Yeah, but yeah, if you get if you go there more like after after the rain and that is the time to time to hit the Kimberleys, but then you got to deal with the heat and the bugs and so yeah, I want to go back there next year after the rain, but yeah, it's definitely be a harder trip than going in winter when you have just got nice conditions. That's epic. Like even speaking to the Petersons where yeah. they did their film, it was just so cool seeing the untouched ground that's up there. I really need to get up and explore yeah. it and I highly encourage anyone listening to investigate it yeah. and uh, yeah, see what see what charters are available up there. Yeah. I think there might be some new ones coming up on the horizons even with the Petersons. So that'd be pretty cool or maybe you can show a few people around. So when it came to <laughs> yeah. um, filming your film, you just said that you spent a month in total out on the island. So like your film is jam-packed. Like I feel like half <laughs> of the fights that you're putting up as well you're just showing the hookup yeah. and then you're showing the fish. It's that, like, you just didn't have yeah. enough time to show anything else. T- <laughs> tell me a little bit about the fishing up there and, and what you did encounter. Yeah. Well, first of all, with the fights, I just find when you're watching videos, you want to see the strike, you want to see the first run, and then you want to see the fish at the side of the boat and someone holding it. I don't really like like watching a video where you're watching someone fight a fish for five minutes. So that is a, a, one of the reasons why I've done that. But also is, like, I caught, with the amount of footage I have, and the amount of fish we caught 
in the end, the whole entire video of fish is caught in one day, that whole film, that just happened to be, we'd spent so long out there, we figured out where the fish were. And we went to that Spanish spot. Oh, I'll talk it to you. We went through the main spot. I'll, I'll explain it to you in the morning. Nailed that. And we went and caught that. Nailed that. And then we went down there and had that whole section. That was all in one day. But throughout the month, I was trying to edit it. And it was just not piecing together well. Because it's it's hard to just piece fish in. And, you know, you got different sky colors. And you're trying to. Whereas that day just fell together. And, um, yeah, cool. So, you, yeah, we just. You primarily wanted to capture it a lot of the fishing action in that one day so for the continuity side of things the skies are still blue and it all looked yeah yeah and when you're watching fishing videos i think it just looks nice when it's glass outs and it's just like blue water and you know that that gets you excited to go oh, i want to go fishing you know yeah that's it i mean i just finished um editing an episode of me up in gladstone went about 100 kilometers offshore and the weather was atrocious and <laughs> even just you know when you're trying to get your thumbnail was shot as well <laughs> And you're trying yeah. to get that nice glass yeah. out or, you know, maybe a little bit of clickbait and it just doesn't <laughs> quite come together. And you're like, oh, gosh, so I was nah. just editing my thumbnail before, uh, yeah, before we jump on this call and I, I was struggling to get something nice and crispy. But that's epic that it all fell, fell and, together for you. And, and another thing was the audio because, I, you know, I'm a basic filmer. The audio was a big thing. So when it's windy, like, my audio is shot. But when it's glass out, you know, you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That, 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 you make a really good point there. So you've uh, grown up in a little bit of a fishing family. Hey, you've got a couple of sisters or siblings, I believe. Uh, everyone seems to love the ocean. Was it a hard, like, going back to your childhood days? What what did they look like? So we actually grew up in a surfing family. We um, were travelled around the country. We were all sponsored for surfing uh, for the better part of 10 years of our life from about 12 till our early 20s. And we grew up in a bus and we were travelling around the Austra- uh, more the East Coast, Australia, and then overseas, and the girls were competing on the QS. I had a bit of a free surf contract, so I'd do trips to Indo and all sorts of sort of unique countries and film that. And that was our upbringing for about 10 years, and then we sort of fell away from surfing, and we started traveling Oz as a, as a family again. And then I've always fished my whole life, and I've always included it throughout all my socials and that. And just the fishing, we just become more addicted to that and sort of just fell into this. It's just been a crazy transition and it's yeah. been unreal. I mean, it's all, all been based around the ocean. Can you imagine living life any other way? Yeah, exactly. We're just addicted to the water. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so many mental health benefits in fishing as well. And for me personally, I've struggled with yes. my mental health in the past. And if I don't go out fishing for, what, 10 days or so, I start getting pretty itchy and angry. Hey, I don't know if you're the same. Yeah, yeah. It's but the same. It's, I used to have it with surfing and now it's fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, it's crazy just some of the health benefits that come with yeah. it and just the adventure and the, the adventure-based lifestyle. Um, so yeah. with, with with your film, it's, it's jam-packed with adventure. What are some of the visuals that uh, if people haven't seen it yet or haven't signed up at thefilminvitational.com and got their access fast, what are some of the visuals and places that you slept that we can see in your film? <laughs> so we... Um, uh, the boat that we end up doing it in was my sister's and dad's boat, and it's a Malcolm Douglas model, and it has like a roof cabin on it. And because we couldn't all quite fit inside the boat, me and Steph were sleeping on the roof. So that's sort of a bit a bit part of the scene. And then one night it was pissing down, raining, and, and we're all trying to bunker in the cabin. I didn't. I should have put a little bit more of that in the film when I rewatch it because it was just a horrible night's sleep. It pissed down. Me, mom, and dad were all trying to bunker in like the tiniest little space, and and the dog Bubby, you see, you see our dog in there as well. So that's just all part of the adventure. But and I think um, even though we're doing it in a reasonably large boat, what we're doing is still like pushing the limits of that boat size. And um, you you can just do it. I just find if you're just willing to have a crack and willing to sometimes be a little bit uncomfy, the amount of places you can take boats and and islands you can go to is just it's um it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, after seeing your film, I wasn't too concerned about where I put you to sleep the other night. Uh, I slept up the front of my boat after <laughs> after a couple of beers, so like, I found that pretty funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he'll sleep anyway. Uh, no worries, Steph was happy as Larry up the front of clickbait, so. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I'll explain that. We'd just flown in and we were driving up to the sunny coast for the premiere. We hadn't booked accommodation. And then we end up back at there, joined on the, on the pierce and, 
It was like early hours of the morning. Where are you going to sleep? And he's like, there's a boat out the front if you're going to sleep in that. I was like, me and Steph, like, perfect. We've done that heaps of times. So yeah. we slept in the cabin of their boat in the street. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was nice and nice and comfy for you. It was all ready to rumble too because clearly we yeah. could do that a little bit. Um, but yeah. so what did you think about the films that were competing this year and um, the quality and the narrative that came through from them? Was there anyone in particular that you really loved? Apart from your own, of course. I actually really loved Rocket Kid's film. I loved his style. I, I hadn't actually... I don't follow the fishing industry super hard, and I hadn't seen a lot of his stuff before, and I just loved his style, and um, I loved how... I know get lures off the Molossi boys as well. I know how sick their lures are, and I just loved that idea of, you know, when he found that, when he was doing the start of the video and he found that chair and made the lures out of it, I was like, that's really, really cool. So I really like that video, and I like um, Ricky Mack's style. I've always... I followed him previously... To meeting him this year i just like his style and he's just I feel like he's doing a similar thing to what i'm doing sort of traveling around the country doing things a little bit rogue and not exactly the way that maybe um everyone does it and i think he's just cool in that sense yeah it's so funny when i had a bit of a chat to him i was like so what's your recipes he's like just salt the world mate sometimes the salt doesn't even make it onto the <laughs> steak you know it's covered in ash and everything yeah. else. You've got plenty of herbs and spices out there. Like, so ghetto. It's so funny just, like, having a yeah. bit of a yarn to him. He's, he's, he's pretty uncut and just pretty chill. Um, And, and you can see why so many people just like that personality. And I, I think it's a great idea that you're going yeah. down that route as well and just sharing some of those behind-the-scenes kind of kind of thing as well Um, of how we live just on a yeah. day-to-day basis being an adventurous people. What can we expect yeah. from some of your other um, personal pages or yeah, some of your upcoming YouTube videos? What have you got in yeah. got in store? So the Kimberly strip I've just filmed, so that'll be coming out uh, probably in about two or three weeks' time. I'll start probably a three or four um, series thing from it, week to week. Cool. But yeah, my videos are just based on going out to islands, having a crack, um, going fishing, and yeah, just doing it like a little bit more rough and uncut and not probably the conventional way but going to places that are, I love the adventure of it. And that's really what it comes down to for me. I love adventure. I love fishing as well, but going to just unique places that are in Australia, like there's so many amazing places that are still so untouched. And um, I just like traveling to them spots and, and showing that you can get to them and, and uh, what fish are there and showing people the way you can do it in not such an expensive way. You can make it cheaper and not have to pay for charters. <laughs> that, that's a fantastic point um, it's, I've, spent, I've spent my fair share of, of money on charters I mean even my boat it's just ridiculous how quickly it piles up and I think that's a great point that you yeah. touch on as well that you don't have to go all out there are ways around doing things and you don't have to have the most expensive gear and equipment we saw that in Sarah and Keelan's film as well and uh, yes. just from what they did yeah um, you know, pretty much just jumping on a TV boat and making a film out of it. That's pretty cool. What sort of style of yeah. fishing um, is your favourite? I mean, TFI, it's, it's had top water involved in it, but now we're branching out into a bit more um, of that adventurous nature. What's what's your favourite yeah. style now? Well, mine is top water, like 100% top water. I love top water fishing because it's so visual. And I feel like there's a lot of like things coming out nowadays where people's using like live scope or and using their sounder and they're sort of staring at their sounder most of the day trying to figure out what's going on whereas i feel like with top water fishing it's so visual you're trying to see <laughs> birds restructure and you're more like aware and i just i love that style of fishing i don't really like looking at the sounder all day long. <laughs> so top water fishing to me is the ultimate yeah it is kind of yeah. like cheating it'll be interesting to see how it progresses over the next couple of years and even just us being it after we saw all of the new technology that's coming out um yeah was, was there yeah. any piece of tech there that you thought was pretty nifty that you could implement i'm so out of the loop it was the first time bloody seeing that live scope i was like that's like cheating isn't it <laughs> you're so, that yeah, real old guy that's like what are you yeah. Not, oh, yeah. Yeah. Back in my day. Yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> so that, yeah probably nah there's so many amazing products in there and so many things that when i was at the i was at the major cast then and i i love my jigging and um the major cast had these tiny little jigs about this big and they're called micro jigs people watching this probably already know about it but i never known about them and everyone who come past were coming through and checking out these micro jigs and telling me that like they caught bass snapper all of these like crazy species on a jig about this big like three gram jig and i was just that, that really did blow me away that 
Yeah, I feel like that something that nobody's tapped into yet either is is micro jigging trout in some of the deeper lakes in Tasmania or just around yeah. the country. That'd be really cool to get one and, yeah. and really dial it in, especially when you're using those light PE two setups or PE one where you can feel the fight on a nice yeah. little overhead reel. That's pretty cool. But just going back to that would be wicked. Yeah, going back to the reason why you love fishing so much. Do you think it's pretty? primitive for you do you think it's about the hunting and collecting or being selective or it just kind of drives you to it because like for me it's a lot of the unknown you don't know what's going to happen i'm there up in bed at like 2 a.m in the morning because i've got a fight with a swordfish (laughs) and i still haven't made it happen and i just can't sleep until i catch this fish what is it for you that keeps you going back well it it is have been in my family my my dad and then my great and my father, uh, my my pop and my great grandfather all fish. So I think it has come through the family a lot. I've fished my whole life, but it is that chase. Like it's so rewarding when you ta- go out and target a fish and you catch it. Like it's such a rewarding feeling, and it's just the unknown as well. Like it's similar with surfing when you're chasing as well. Like I think it's quite a similar thing where you're chasing the unknown, and when you do succeed and pull it off, the reward is just so good that you get addicted to that feeling. So I think that is really why. I love fishing and also the primitive side of it. Like when you're traveling and I've never had much money, like I'm always sort of just getting by. And if you're living off the road, like having fish to eat, like that cuts down the cost of living massively. So there's another big factor into it. Yeah. I mean, for me in the fishing that I do, I don't know if it quite cuts even when I'm traveling eight hours north and then coming home with a bucket of fish after you spent $1,500 on fuel, but that's something I definitely need to work on. (laughs) You've got it down pat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah um so seventy five thousand dollars is up for grabs uh you came second last year in the tfi yes. what would it mean um taking home that prize money and, and what would you do with it would you upgrade the boat anything on the horizon that you'd sort of try to do with that prize money if you want the prize money for me would be 100 percent be life-changing like i've never i've never had a lot of money and i've always sort of I've been just always sort of just getting by and just pulling a lot of this stuff off and I feel like this this money would just get me that step ahead where I don't know if I'd I'd probably buy another boat and have to look into it a little bit but I think I'd get, get myself from that position where I can really do weekly YouTubes and try and actually make it happen whereas a lot of the time I'll get sort of a bit of a roll on and then something will go wrong with your car or a boat or something and then you sort of have to fit, go to back to work, fix that for a bit and then you go back to YouTube again. I think it's making it too not just a flowing thing that it's just like you just get a roll on with it you know what i mean i feel like if i won this comp i would just start getting that ball on with it and be able to pull out more videos to everyone and and that's what i would love to do that would be awesome maybe i'd probably have to buy another boat though <laughs> i'd probably have to get another boat it's only, yeah i love that thing it's center it's sentimental to me but i'd probably have to get another one yeah, and it'd be sad to see that go. But yeah, just like um, what you were saying, life-changing money. And um, it'd be pretty cool just to invest in, back in yourself and, and be able to create that consistent yeah. content. Because something I don't think a lot of people realize back at home, but a lot of people put a lot of energy and money into this. But especially with fishing, what I find happens is, you know, you might not get the bite. It might take three or four adventures yeah. until you've actually got an episode yeah. that you can put together so you're consistently yeah. hustling probably a little bit more yeah. than you know if you're just talking to the camera or vlogging yeah. on a day-to-day basis the outlay to yeah. produce fishing content is hey. far far more greater and obviously you've experienced that as well yeah um so, so yeah. i guess uh in closing really? if you could tell anybody to uh to vote for you this year what's the reason why they're swinging Swinging you uh, their vote and jumping on the filminvitational.com and, and rating you number one from that one to ten. Well, first of all, I've got the best film in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good reason. No, nah, it's just like, it, I just think it would, it would go towards just a good cause to just keep creating content, which you guys want to see. Like, this is, this is why we have this video going. Everyone wants to see cool places and learn new things and, yeah, if you vote for me, you just I'm just going to pour it straight back into traveling around and showing you islands and and places that you may one day want to go to. So yeah, yeah, that would be the that would be the main thing would go. Behind. Yeah, cool. And uh, if you could give any advice yeah. to some budding outdoor enthusiasts out there that want to start creating content, I mean, you're relatively new to it. You've been doing it for a year. What would you say to those <laughs> kids back at home that might just be uh, getting their first GoPro or some other, you know? some yeah. older guys that are, that are starting to get into their fishing again 
what would you say to those You're upcoming right. content creators to to encourage them to produce content? Yeah, I mean, have the GoPro on your head and just press play, and, and it just happens. Like that's all you got to do. Put that GoPro on your head and press play, and magic happens. Um, make sure you have a lot of batteries <laughs> with this. Shit. Yeah, but yeah, that's what it just comes down to. With it just just put it on your head and press play. That's that's how I started my YouTube channel, and there's not really too like along the lines of that. There's not too much to it. It more comes down to the editing part that is a bit uh, like teeth pulling teeth out. For me, anyway, some people might love that part, but, yeah, that's, that's where I Yeah, come. it's definitely a larger <laughs> investment of time as soon as you start getting into the to the editing side of things. Did you edit your film yourself this year? I think you mentioned you did. I did, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I did. Um, I've obviously done the YouTube the past year, so I have, I have a bit of a knack to it, but, yeah definitely no professional just yet but i think the, the film come together yeah. nicely and for you guys out there there is a free editing software called da vinci yep. so you can get that for free i believe but what did you edit your film on this year i edit i edit all on final cut and mainly because i was i tried to learn premiere pro and i just couldn't wrap my head around it and i found final cut more of just like a good version of iMovie <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. i went to final cut and it's and it's a one-off payment, whereas with the Premiere now, you get to pay like uh, 80 bucks a month or something. Yeah, there is that student discount on top of that, but it, it's certainly a little bit more of an outlay. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you are starting out, it's probably best that you stick to those free softwares or that one-time payment. But I think we'll um, we'll wrap it up yeah. there. It's, it's been nice to have a bit of a yarn too, and it was great to catch up at after as well. We'll have to teach something up and, and catch up it in was. the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but in closing, yeah. is there anyone that you'd like to thank for, for contributing to your film this year? I mean, apart from BCF for being able to put, put this on, um, is there anyone else out there? Yeah, uh, of course, my family, dad, uh, mum, partner and sisters, they're number one thanks always just being supportive and just helping us make this all happen. But uh, Frogley's Offshore, they sponsored me for the last five years and just looked after us so well, even before I was really pushing this fishing stuff, Frogley's were giving me gear. And, um, yeah, they've been a major part into um, being able to post the fishing content I've had because I've had all the gear to catch the fish with it. And then Blackledge as well, he hooked us up with this um, with the top water laws for this event. Um, yeah, so cheers to, cheers to them guys. And it's been um, been a hell of a ride and I'm excited to, excited to see the outcome of this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that's it. So guys listening back at home, if you're driving the car or if you're watching this in the living room, thefilminvitational.com. It's the first place you're going to hear the remainder of these podcasts coming out as well. So make sure that you jump over to thefilminvitational.com. Save this on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcasts. Jackson, thank you very much for catching up. It's been bloody awesome to talk to you, mate. Mate, great to have a chat again. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs>